It's a pleasure to be here. The song Nice and Slow, you're going to perform for us a little bit later. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. and your album is off to a great start. And you uh, make me really want to actually broke records or match Whitney Houston's record of being yeah, at, yeah. at number one for 11 weeks. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Yes, yes. But you know, I'm young, talented, gifted, and I've been working at it for a long time, you know? Absolutely, you have. You know? Um, well, your music is very innovative. You listen to the album, and it has like a pop appeal and also R&B. So how, how, did you deliberately try to make it a crossover <laughs> album? You know what I like to do? <clears throat> I like things that really don't normally mix, like a little bit of hip hop and R&B to make pop. I mean, if you look at it nowadays, if you look on the charts, um, the pop of America nowadays is hip hop and R&B. So I mean, it's really always been here. It's just, it's you know, it's it's just coming up. You know, or people are beginning to recognize what the real is. You know, and it's it's about R&B and hip hop. And I, I got with a lot of great producers: Babyface, uh, Jermaine Dupri. Teddy Riley and Black Street, you know, um, and just put it down. I just did my best and, you know, worked hard at it. How was it working with Babyface? I mean, you're working with the best. Oh, without a doubt. I yeah. mean, after he gave me my record deal, there wasn't that much more he could do to, you know, make me that happy kid. I mean, just from the jump. But, I mean, I finally got a chance to work with him as a child. I always, you know, used to listen to his records, um, whatever came on the radio, because, I mean, back then, back in the day, my mother didn't buy me tapes, you know. That, it was all about, you know, wax, so. I didn't get that many. <laughs> well, you also took it upon yourself on this album to write six of the songs. Yes, And yes. you also produced as well. Yes, Did yes. you learn a lot working with Babyface in this regard? Um, well, yeah, actually, he did. He, he taught me a lot about melody and uh, how to arrange vocals um, through the song that, that we did, actually, was a remake of his record, uh, Slow Jam, which was initially done by Midnight Star. Y'all familiar with that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's one of those songs that I wanted to just dedicate back to, you know, what, what really, what music really is. So I put it on the album, and, um, you know, I did it with Monica. And through that, you know, he just taught me a lot about arranging. And actually, I had the opportunity to, you know, go in there and just sort of vibe with him. And then we did Bedtime, which is, a, you know, a, a something laid back for the ladies. Yeah, <laughs> liking that one. <laughs> well, did you deliberately try to keep the lyrics positive? Actually, I always try to be positive as a whole. Um, this time, I sort of, I sort of took a little step on the wild side. I mean, as you know, as far as me being an explicit, you know, artist, I'm not that. I'm, that's not me. But um, actually, I put Lil Kim on my album, and she has, you know, sort of, sort of a little provocative thing going. You know, she's sort of, you know, in the tabloids for being a bad girl. Right. So, um, I mean, that's just another side of me. You but know? when you're criticized for that, I read where you said it's not a provocative album necessarily or vulgar. Yeah. It's just that you're explaining how it is for a young man to be coming of age or to be coming into his manhood. In a way type to of come and come of age, actually, just something that some of my age goes through. And I mean, it's pretty. There's plenty of people out there who can relate to the same thing. And that's how I write my music. As a writer, that's what Babyface told me. It's best to write what you can relate to. So when you sing, personal experience, you can get, you can get to it. But as far as it being an explicit album, you know, they have a clean version. So. <laughs> <laughs> how are you discovered? I was, just, I was discovered through a uh, talent show in Atlanta, Georgia. Actually, a, a series of uh, talent shows. I, I went to the uh, uh, Star Search. You're familiar with that, right? Right, absolutely. Search. Um went to Star Search. Um, I got a lot of calls after that. Uh, but beforehand, I had talked to you know, a, a big LaFace, a rap over at, at LaFace. He uh, introduced me to L.A. Reed and Babyface. I, uh, I had a talent show in Atlanta, Georgia. I had won it like three times, and he finally said, yo, I want you to meet somebody. You want to, you know, have a record there? I said, sure, hey, why not? So <laughs> why we got not? To and you were 14 years old, right? Back, I was 13, 13. this happened. Yeah, I was 13, and I went over. Did you to, feel like that took away from your childhood at all? No, actually, I, I was living every day. I mean, I had a mother who was strict. <laughs> I still had to clean up the house, take the garbage out, and then still, you know, complete an album. Go to school, go to sleep. <laughs> You know, do your homework, mop the floor, take the dog out, take the dog for a walk. Don't make me take my bed. <laughs> you know. you know. I love your mom. <laughs> she's <a sweetheart. laughs> Actually, she's a big influence in your life, oh, right? Definitely. She, you know, she's my manager, and I keep her with me everywhere I go. I mean, without her, I don't think that, you know, it, it would be as great as a victory 
as, you know, as it is now because, I mean, I don't have anyone to celebrate with. And I like to take care of my mother. She's like the only lady in my life right now, as a Aww, matter of fact. Oh, how nice. Yeah. <laughs> so she makes sure you stay sweet and down to earth, right? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. I mean, it's just pretty easy to stay down to earth. I mean, it's so much easier to be positive. And that's one thing that I teach younger kids, you know, to have a positive vibe. I mean, it's a lot of... That's a lot of hatred out there, and you can't fall a victim to it. I just say be a, a leader and not a follower, you know? Um, like I said, it's so much easier to be nice. I mean, well, why not? I admire you know? that about you because you take time and you help young people oh, definitely. try to stay on the right track, and definitely. you're with the Boys and Girls Club, right? The and Boys the and Girls Club, get big on safety. I was a part of, um, um, let me see, the, uh, an event called the Stay in School Jam, which allowed, you know, the children to see uh, the uh, entertainer of, of their choice, if they, you know, did good in school, got great attendance. Um, some people on the honor roll would come back and, you know, get a chance to shake hands. And then I would just go around to different schools and, you know, act as somewhat like a, a counselor just to tell kids that if you have a dream, you know, you know, somebody will believe in you and, and that somebody is me. I believe in every child in America. I think that they are the most creative, you know, human beings on this planet. How cool is that of him to do that? I mean, that's so great. We have to go to a commercial so you guys don't go away with me like that. <laughs>